Welcome to the damn basics. Knife skills are important. Everybody needs to know them. It helps you cook, gives you some confidence, makes everything look nice, uh, helps you with the process of cooking as far as timing and everything else. Uh, so it's very important, but don't want you to get all freaked out about it. So I'm gonna show you some of the professional cuts that everybody talks about that have to be perfect. Hmm. And I'm gonna also show you some cuts that you're probably gonna end up using more than anything on an everyday basis, uh, which don't have to be as precise. Okay, we're gonna be doing some basic cuts. Pretty much everything you do in cooking comes down to, you know, um, well, lots of things, but obviously for today's purposes, the cuts of vegetables. Um, not gonna be going into meats, but um, basically gonna show you how to achieve all these different cuts that go from the smallest, like a brunoise, um, which is about an eighth of an inch cube, and julienne all the way up to a um, large dice, and then some other cuts that you'll probably use on an everyday level. So why don't we start with a carrot? If you're gonna be doing a brunoise, you can do it with a tiny little carrot, nice thin carrot, but um, it's a little easier if you have a bigger one. Uh, you don't wanna get a carrot too big, but anyway, that's a good size. So to start for a brunoise, I'm just gonna cut the top off. I'm gonna use about a two and a half inch piece, long piece, and you'll see that it rocks, right? Most vegetables, lots of root vegetables and everything else, they, they're round or cylindrical, like I was saying, and so that's not very stable. But what you'd wanna do is cut off a bit of it. We're gonna square off and square off and square off, right? So now you got pretty much a square or a rectangle, right? These you can use however you would choose. And then, when you're doing a julienne uh, or brunoise, it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Don't help go out and get the ruler, don't need it, just eye it. Um, make sure though that when you're cutting, your body is at an angle to the board, not straight on. If it's straight on, you're not ergonomic and you're, now you're working against yourself. See how I'm kind of pushing my arm into myself? You're actually at an angle and that gives you room for your for your arm to move. So I'm just gonna eye it about an eighth of an inch and just, you know, one cut, one cut, one cut, one cut. So now we have eighth inch slices. And then from those slices, you go ahead, you can pile them up as much as you want, or you can just do two, or you can do one, whatever, but don't go too high because then it gets kind of unwieldy. And now you go down an eighth of an inch again. Eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch. And if you don't get the rest of it, that's okay. So now you have a julienne. So you have like itsy bitsy tiny little carrot sticks. Eighth of an inch square, and as long as you want, I guess, uh, no point in having, you know, trying to make spaghetti though, but about two and a half, three inches long, two inches long, one inch long, what have you. But typically they're about two and a half inches long and an eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch. That would be your typical julienne. So I'm gonna put those here. And then we're gonna do a brunoise from the julienne. So we've got our eighth inch thick sticks there. See that? Um, straighten them all out, right? Square them off. What we're looking for is an eighth of an inch dice. Okay. And that is your brunoise. So it starts off as a julienne. And then when you cut them in the opposite, uh, opposite way, they become a brunoise or small dice. And all of these shapes and sizes have applications for, well, something like this, you would use in say salads. Um, you can even use in, in pastas. Um, when, you, when I do a bolognese 
for uh, lasagna, I cut my mirepoix into brunoise. The next one up is a small stick, which is now a quarter of an inch, right? So we're working our way up. We have an eighth of an inch, and now we're gonna go to a quarter of an inch. So just sort of eye it. I'm gonna get three pieces out of that. So we have the, the slice again, right? About a quarter of an inch. And then eye it. And you don't, you're not working in a professional kitchen, okay? This is all for home cooking. Um, so you're not gonna be judged on the exactness of everything. So if it's not exactly a quarter of an inch, don't sweat it. You know, we're not at a, this is not a culinary academy. And I think it's more important for people to just get in the kitchen and cook. You know, don't freak out. But, so now you can see that that's a quarter of an inch brunoise. And you know, there's also these fancy French terms for these, but we're not gonna go into it because I don't, you know, you don't really need to know it. Most people don't even use them anymore. And I think what I'll do, is I'll go ahead and make another round. So I have the, the square rectangle again, if you will. And quarter of an inch, 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 quarter of an inch. And there. Then we go up to a half inch. And you could call this one a large mirepoix or a large dice. Right? Mm -hmm. I just put those there. There's about a, that's bigger, see that? And at this point, I just wanna show you, you'll see when I'm cutting these, I'm slicing down and then I'm rolling over onto the flat side. Then I'm slicing down, rolling over the flats to the flat side. I'm always cutting away from the hand that's holding the vegetable or the item. And I'm eyeing where I want to square it off. Okay. Here's a... And then basically from here, you just end up working your way up. No need to end up learning all the terms and all the fancy stuff because for the most part, you don't need to know it. <laughs> Nobody really uses them anymore. I think it's kind of cool. If you want to use them, you can look them up. Um, and it is kind of cool, but we don't really need to. Okay, those are some of the basic sticks and dice, if you will. And now we're gonna go into something a little more casual and stuff that you're probably gonna use every day. That's called a roll cut. There is such a thing called a roll cut, but it's not that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm feeling goofy today. Um, a roll cut is also known as an oblique cut. And that is kind of a cool cut, really. This is basically a roll cut. You start with, say, a carrot or zucchini or parsley, whatever. And it's usually for something that's long and cylindrical. Um, don't even. I was told not to say anything. Okay. So we're cutting on a bias, about 45 degrees or so. Um, and then you turn a quarter turn, say the carrot in this case, and you give it another 45 degree cut. Turn a quarter turn, another 45 degree cut. Quarter turn, another 45 degree cut, right? And this cut, basically gives you 
a lot of surface area, which for some things you would like to have. If you're gonna be doing uh, braised carrots or if you're gonna be putting these in a, um, say a stew or something like that, um, it gives you a lot more surface area and they're a little bit more attractive than just having that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, but you know, these are kind of cool. And you don't have to make them this small. You can actually even make them quite a bit larger. See that? So like if you're gonna do say uh, beef bourguignon or some sort of a stew or braise, um, that would be kind of a cool cut to have on your, on your dish. Um, just make sure that whatever you're doing, they're all about the same size for even cooking. You don't wanna have a bunch that big and a bunch that big and a bunch, you know, that big because they're all going to cook at separate times and that'll be mushy that won't be cooked enough yada 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 so that is a roll or oblique cut um we're going to go sort of backwards actually maybe i'll do this i'll put this here we're going to sort of go backwards because since we were cutting on a bias i'm going to cut a little steeper here Right, so I have more surface area, like that, more surface area. And I'm going to cut as thinly as I can. Again, another case made for a very sharp knife. You could not do that with a dull knife, I guarantee you, okay? These are pretty thin. Think of them as like carrot chips, okay? Pretty thin. And what we do with those is we don't stack them, but we lay them on top of each other, staggering them thusly. Okay? So all pretty much about the same height for the most part. Then we make a fine julienne from this, from this cut. Now I'm doing it fast. I just want to show you that from a normal julienne, you can then get a very fine julienne, okay? And if you wanted to cut that actually into dice, you could do that as well. If you really wanted a brunoise that was very, very fine. And I dice them up thusly. I get a very, very fine brunoise. Or, let's push it! If I do this type of thing, what do you think this is gonna be called? Well, yeah, technically it's chopped, and I'm chopping, but it's really, 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 really fine. Then, coins or rondelles, right? Okay, so the last two cuts I wanna show you are the cuts that you're pretty much gonna be using more than any of this stuff. Um, and that is a uh, quarter cut and a half moon. It sounds so kind of romantic, doesn't it? So we're gonna start with a carrot. Square off that side, square off that side. And let's just cut it in half. Okay, so it sounds complicated, but it's not. Basically start with a piece of carrot, cut it in half, put them side by side, if you want to cut both at the same time, and then whatever thickness you want, right, that's half moon. Wherever your finger goes will determine the width of the piece of carrot. See that? Those are all half moons, but <clears throat> different widths. It doesn't really matter what the width is, the cut still remains the same. What a quarter cut is going to look like
basically took that half, cut it in half again. So now if I had four of those, that would be quarters. And then just slice them into any width I want. So I think pretty much it's safe to say you're going to be using those two cuts more than anything. You'll probably end up then using the slices and maybe some of the diagonal, perhaps some of that. Definitely the Julian here and there. All the other stuff, um, you will at some point and you can practice. But again, if you're going for culinary school or you're going to open up a restaurant or you want to impress people, um, then you're going to have to go for precision. I wanted to show you the um, precise way of doing all those. But again, just have at it. If they're not all perfect, nobody cares. It's not that important. What's important is for you to get comfortable with the knife and to get comfortable with all, what all these cuts are, what they mean and how you can use them. So for the last cut, another term from the French that you're going to hear and read and, <laughs> and know about called chiffonade. Okay. That basically refers to Think of it as a julienne of something leafy. So when you have chiffonade to do, what you end up doing is when you have your bunch of leaves, whatever they are, right? Try to find the largest one, ones first, put those on the board, okay? See, that one's a little bit smaller. I'll take this one. That one's smaller. This one's smaller. And the reason for that is that the largest leaf on the exterior helps keep all the other leaves that are shorter, smaller, whatnot, um, from going all over the place. You actually end up taking the longest side and rolling it like this. <laughs> now, I know some of you are saying, oh man, I don't like to roll that kind of stuff myself. Okay, if you're really good at rolling, just, you know, you know what to do. But um, anyway, <clears throat> we're talking about kitchen rolling now. You end up slicing through your leaves thinly so that when you get to the end, you have these cute little strips, right? Now, this is basil, and I like to cut basil this way when I do like a caprese salad or some other type of salads where I want that fresh basil, but I don't want big chunks of basil. So I would use this and then I got like sprinkle it on top like that. You can do the same thing with sage, with spinach, what have you. Um, like I say, anything that's a leafy green. We've got everything from julienne and brunoise to fine julienne and uh, discs and tournée and chiffonade. And that's, that's pretty much it. And that applies to um, almost everything, even apples and fruit and whatnot. Well, what do you think? That's some damn good cutting, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you got a lot out of today's episode. As you can see, it's really not that difficult. If you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, give me a jingle. If you want to jingle that bell, that'd be nice too. Um, and um, of course, like the show, that would be very nice.